Welcome into the second hour, my friends. Three hours are left that lie before us. Peter Schweitzer is going to be with us to the bottom of the hour. He is the editor-at-large of Breitbart.com and the president of the Government Accountability Institute and best-selling author. His new book is Extortion, How Politics Extract Your Money, Buy Votes, and Line Their Own Pockets. He's also been featured in 60 Minutes documentaries, The New York Times, Foreign Affairs. I I'm not going to go any further. The point is he is a major uh, investigative journalist. And the reason this is so important is look at Hillary with the emails, lying about them, being caught with classified ones, and she still hasn't gotten in trouble. Will they go after her? Or does she have too much blackmail on other people? How deep does the corruption go? Who is the most corrupt in Congress, and, and, and why does it seem like if you're super corrupt, you're almost too big to fail? And then when he leaves us at the bottom of the hour, we're going to get into the latest on Syria. Putin says that uh, Assad can be given asylum there. That looks like Assad may flee or something. Uh, also, integrated Muslim migrants say Germans are disgusting. They should all disappear in a new video. A big article that's red linked on Infowars.com. Great Depression 2.0. Sell everything. 2016, cataclysmic year for stocks, warns RBS. That's not InfoWars saying that. We're reporting on what mainstream news is reporting, what governments, what major uh, financial institutions are saying. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for coming on. A big fan of the uh, work that uh, you and others are doing over at Breitbart.com. Uh, it just seems like so many of the things that uh, were in the conspiracy realm years ago are now out in the open. So have we reached a paradox where so much is out in the open, but people don't get in trouble? Uh, I mean, are things worse or is it we just know more? Well, thanks for having me on, Alex. Um, I think we know more. I think that um, when you talk about uh, financial corruption in Washington, D.C., it's always been a problem. But as government has gotten larger and more powerful, you can start to add zeros to the back of those dollar amounts. And so corruption's become a lot more lucrative. What before might have been, you know, a $10,000 or $20,000 transaction for the benefit of a congressman now is a 200 or maybe $2 million transaction. And they hide it very, very effectively, but more and more of it's coming out. And it's both political parties, uh, and we have a permanent political class in Washington, D.C., uh, that that is enriching itself at our expense. Break down the book, uh, uh, why it's so important, because I haven't read it yet, but it's gotten amazing reviews, and I've talked to a lot of insiders. They say that they learn things from the book. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, several members of Congress have come to me uh, after uh, extortion was published and said, um, you know, that's exactly what goes on. And really what, what uh, the book extortion is about, Alex, is that we have thought about money in politics, um, I think, almost exactly wrong. The model that most of us have in mind, and of course this does happen in Washington, is it's kind of like that old Jimmy Stewart movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. you got these innocent people that go to Washington, they want to serve their communities in Congress or in the Senate, and they slowly get corrupted by these outside forces, and then they just can't resist it anymore and they become corrupt. That certainly happens. But I think what is much more common is people that get attracted to government service um, are themselves sort of corrupt to begin with. Many of them are. And so the model is not so much one of bribery where a earnest politician is getting bribed by moneyed interest. I think more often what's happening is politicians are extorting businessmen and people in their community and forcing them to, in a sense, be, become political contributors, even when they don't want to, because the fear is if they don't, Alex, that bad things are going to happen to them. This is, this is what the mafia does. It's an extortive process. And I think this is the reason you have an unprecedented flow of money coming to Washington, D.C. Most people in business, not all, but most of them basically want to be left alone. Uh, but the government's not going to let you be alone. They're going to force you to basically prote pay protection money uh, so that uh, bad things don't happen to you and your family. Wow. And... Of course, you've also got the book coming out, uh, Clinton Cash, and I wanted to ask you from your research, who are the kingpins, who are at the top of the corruption racket? But what really concerns me is we all know about, you know, Harry Truman and getting money for highways in Missouri or whatever, and, and, and that's terrible, but there's always boss hog stuff in some areas, and you try to yeah. keep it to a minimum, but now Saudi Arabian money, Chinese money, 
uh, telling what films uh, you know can produce, when movies can come out. Uh, we've got the Clinton Foundation and billions of dollars from foreign countries with dictators, and then suddenly she lets the State Department uh, sign an agreements to ship them weapons. It's so naked, it's so brazen that I wonder if they get away with this, what's next? I mean, I mean, I read about African dictators and stuff in in equatorial new guinea and you think it's bad it's nothing compared to our leaders now i mean possibly could they be some of the most corrupt people ever making um you know the uh ameldo marcus look like a a a, a good lady <laughs> well you know as i point out in clinton cash what the clintons have done is figure out a uh, unique way to get around laws that are designed to prevent foreign influence. You know, the Supreme Court heard a case uh, in 2012, Alex, where two Canadian citizens challenged the constitutionality of a law that says only if you are a U.S. citizen, permanent resident, can you actually give to a political campaign. The Supreme Court heard the case from these two Canadians. They came back nine to zero and said, no, this law makes complete sense. We don't want foreign influence flowing into our elections. When was the last time the Supreme Court agreed nine to nothing on anything? Never. Well, so the Clintons have figured out a way. They set up this foundation, the Clinton Foundation, and Bill Clinton hits the lecture circuit. And this is a way to circumvent that. So they can't get African dictators, they can't get corrupt uh, people that are international fugitives to give money to their campaigns. But they can get those people to give to their foundation, and they can get those people to give Bill Clinton inflation speaking fees as a conduit for bribery as opposed to giving to their political campaigns and that's what they've done and the level of corruption it involves the Russians it involves organized crime it involves African warlords the people that the Clintons have taken money from is staggering and frightening and what I chart in the book is the connection between the flow of money and an action that Hillary Clinton takes as Secretary of State and when you see this pattern repeated over and over again, the only conclusion you can come to is these events are connected and these are, in effect, bribes. And, of course, the Associated Press and others are now reporting FBI Clinton probe expands to public corruption track with all the corruption, the cattle futures, the, the scams, the dead bodies, the mafia, the cocaine kingpins getting, getting pardons. I mean, there's no doubt in my view, that the Clintons are organized crime. And is that why they're still in power, because they're just too big to fail, that you just can't arrest the president, uh, the former president and the former first lady, uh, because it would just be too painful, kind of like they let Nixon you know, scamper off into the darkness? The difference is Nixon didn't do anything near this, and he went off into the darkness. The Clintons are still there running things. Well, you know, Alex, look at the recent public corruption cases that we've had. You know, Senator, uh, sorry, Congress, uh, Governor McDonnell in Virginia, or Senator Menendez in New Jersey, or you have the governor of Oregon, Kitzhaber, who resigned. In all of those cases, you had, uh, you know, a few examples where they took money that they legally could take, but they took favorable actions for the benefit of the donor. You've got the governor of Virginia, former governor, who's in jail because of that. You've got Menendez facing charges. Uh, and I think these individuals should have been charged. But my point is that what they did, the scale of what they did is small very small in comparison to the widespread pattern of conduct that the Clintons have done. The dollar amounts are bigger. The people that they're taking the money from are far more nefarious. The favorable actions that Hillary took as Secretary of State are far worse. One of the, one of the cases that I highlighted in the book uh, and that the New York Times, of all people, has confirmed in a 4,000-word front-page piece is the Clintons got $145 million dollars from the shareholders in a small uranium company that wanted to sell their assets to the Russian government. Hillary Clinton's State Department was required to sign off on that deal, and they did. So literally, Hillary Clinton's State Department gave about 20% of U.S. uranium assets in the United States to the Russian government. Unbelievable. And the Clinton Foundation got $145 million from the shareholders. In the I remember Those seeing that at Breitbart, and, and then Congress talked about it some, but, and it wasn't even a big deal, though. None of the other media picked it up. Think about that, folks. A foreign power 
getting our strategic uranium supply, if that isn't treason, if that isn't sedition, if that isn't espionage, if that isn't uh, just industrial-level espionage, I don't know what is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's remarkable, and, and sort of the list goes on. I mean, you've got international fugitives. You've got a guy who is business partners with Mark Rich. You remember Mark Rich. He was the international fugitive that Bill Clinton pardoned on his last day in office. Uh, Mark Rich, um, you know, of course, his ex-wife gave a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation and the Democratic Party. Bill Clinton pardons him. Well, that business partner of Mark Rich, a guy named Mark Chigori, uh, is a very corrupt individual who lives in Nigeria. Now, he was convicted in 2000 of money laundering and aiding abetting a criminal enterprise in Europe because he was helping the dictator of Nigeria um, literally smuggle billions of dollars out of the country and put them in Swiss bank accounts for his benefit. This is a guy that the Clintons have embraced. He's pledged a billion dollars, that's with a B, to the Clinton Global Initiative. He's, he's helped arrange speeches for Bill Clinton. He's given to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, in fact, when um, one of his sons got married, Bill Clinton showed up at the wedding. These are the kinds of people that are throwing cash at the Clintons and are getting favorable access and got favorable access while she was Secretary of State. They're, they're not getting their money, Alex, from you know an insurance company in Great Britain. They're getting it from people who do mining deals with warlords in the Congo. They're doing it with people like Gilbert Chigori. They're doing it with individuals involved in this Russian uranium deal. These are bad, corrupt individuals. Um, and, and that's, I think, what people don't realize about the Clintons. Peter Schweizer of Breitbart.com, their editor-at-large, is our guest. And, of course, he heads up one of the major anti-corruption organizations that you constantly see ferreting out uh, amazing amounts of information. Uh, the president of the Government Accountability Institute and multi-time best-selling author. Uh, and the new book is out. Of course, he wrote Clinton Cash. Uh, but Congressman Jones, who was kind enough to uh, you know, tell us we should have you on, uh, you know, just says your book that's what I said, talking to insiders, is just 100% dead on and could really, if the American people read about it, if journalists read about it and followed the leads in it that are confirmed, this could really put a dent in the corruption like the church committee hearings or others did in the 70s. I mean, there's got to be some point in the cycle where we just dial back corruption. Instead, there's this attitude that, oh, it's always going to be there. They always lie, go along with it. But yeah, now China says, you know, again, what movies can come out? I see Chinese government communist propaganda in, like, everything from The Martian to, to, to the new Red Dawn. I, I see it in the news, uh, the political correctness, uh, the funding, uh, the, the, the Chinese government financing where they uh, keep uh, energy prices high here, where they put the carbon restrictions in, ensuring our jobs go to China. China lobbying that carbon restrictions be put on India at the U.N., and they are. Again, they're not just doing it to us. I mean, when Donald Trump says, man, we make bad deals, he's simplifying it. Our elites are literally like we're a boat with the engine going. They've got us chained to the dock telling us they really want us to be able to go out on the lake. No, they've chained us up to the dock. It's time to take the chain off. It's just crazy. So let me ask you this. How do we stop this, sir? And where is it going from your you know, deep research if we don't stop it, because I've been on air 20 years. It seems like corruption's doubled in the magnitude since then, uh, maybe tripled. Uh, a, how much worse has it gotten? How do we stop it? Where is it all going? Well, it's a great question, Alex, and you're right. Walter Jones is one of those guys on Capitol Hill who's really trying to fight these issues, and there are good people. Uh, I get frustrated when, when you know people say there's nobody good up there, nobody's fighting it, they're all corrupt. That's simply not true, and to me that's a cop-out, and you're exactly right. There's an opportunity here we have to try to take our government back, and here's what people need to know. There's an organization, international organization called Transparency International that looks at corruption and per perceived corruption. They, they survey businessmen around the world and say, how corrupt are certain countries? When Barack Obama became president in 2009, the United States was in the middle of advanced industrialized countries in perceived corruption. Uh, by 2012, the end of his first term, we are now at the bottom. We are seen as the most corrupt 
of advanced industrialized countries in the world. So that was as of 2012, and I'm sure it's gotten worse. And the problem is, as government gets bigger, as they take more of our money, but as they expand their power and their reach, whether it's our health care or something else, it gives them more opportunities to put the screws to us and to extract benefits and to extort money. So what do we need to do? Number one, uh, we need to have transparency. People need to be informed and look at what their elected officials are doing. And we have to have a zero-tolerance policy, Alex. We can't say, well, he's our guy, so it's okay that he's doing it. We have to have a zero-tolerance policy for self-enrichment and cronyism. And number two, we have to fight any efforts to expand the size and scope of government, because that is the breeding ground for corruption. If these guys don't have the power and the control over our lives, they are not going to have the levers with which they can enrich That's right. Themselves. Dial back the regulations. What do you think of Governor Abbott's move to have a con-con uh, to try to block what's going on? I mean, I've never been a supporter of a con-con because they could change the Constitution, Bill of Rights, but they're already doing it by executive power. Congress isn't blocking it. Uh, the, the, the courts are certifying it, so it's a desperate move, but for the first time in my life, uh, I mean, the house is already burning down. Uh, what do you think? Well, it's a great, a great question. I'm certainly not a constitutional historian, but what I would say is, look, the, the, the Founding Fathers recognized that the states have a unique role, and the federal government has clearly gone well beyond the scope of what it was designed. And if it takes a convention, a uh, convention of the states or a constitutional convention, to deal with that, that may be the only mechanism left. I do think there are people in Washington. We can elect better people in Washington. We can move the ball down the field. But, but ultimately, something needs to be done as far as the encroachment, because otherwise, we are simply going to see more more self-enrichment, and more wealth creation. Think about this for a second, Alex. Of the 10 wealthiest counties in the entire United States, the 10 wealthiest counties, seven of them, seven of them are counties that border Washington, D.C. And, 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 and D.C. is the richest place in the world. That's um, right. They, uh, they just passed Silicon Valley a couple years ago for per capita income. Per capita income is now higher in Washington, D.C. than it is in Silicon Valley in California. If folks want to know the disconnect, I'm only in D.C. maybe once a year covering things. And even when you're not in the super nice areas or the nice areas, there's armored limos, diplomats, foreign secret service getting in your face, treating tourists and families like crud. And then almost every restaurant I go in, there are the most beautiful women I've ever seen, the cream of America, literally getting in the limos with the politicians, in the limos with the lobbyists. You know, the hookers are more ubiquitous than water fountains. And the point is, it's just, it's like Rome. It's so decadent. And now at University of Texas in Austin, they've had UN advisors there. And UN comes and investigates the governor and the border in New Mexico, Texas, and Arizona. And Breitbart broke months ago. I couldn't believe when I read it. I went to the UN documents. There it was. A, a strong cities initiative opening UN offices to watch our local governments and work with the feds. I mean, you can really see... Uh, the arrogant takeover, and now the U.N. wants to extend diplomatic immunity to hedge funds, you can see the new royalty is what I'm saying, an above-the-law group whose main business is shelling off American supremacy, shelling off American industry, sh uh, making deals with other countries and in interest uh, to shut down sectors to transfer it to them. They've sold the country out, and they are just in their own world knee-deep in hookers. I mean, I'm sorry, sir, but that's what I see. Well, you know, Alex, it, it, here's a story that I think really captures it. A couple of years ago, I did a special for Fox News called Boomtown, and it was on Washington, D.C. And in that special, we actually interviewed a guy who is a salesman for Ferrari of Washington, D.C. There's a Ferrari dealer in Washington, D.C. And he told us on camera, Alex, that um, the people at headquarters of Ferrari were kind of frustrated with, with Ferrari of Washington, D.C. And we said, well, why is that? Is it because you're not selling enough cars? And he said, no. No, it's because Ferrari in Beverly Hills, California, and Ferrari in South Beach, Florida, when people come in to buy Ferraris, they're financing their purchases, and the headquarters wants that. In Ferrari of Washington, D.C., too many people are paying cash. So we have a situation where Ferrari actually sells more cars in Washington, D.C. than they do in Beverly Hills or South Beach, and people are paying cash. They're not even bothering to finance their deals. That tells you how out of control uh, the self-enrichment and the corruption. And they're doing it at the expense of the country's whole future, 
they don't even, I mean, e even smart crooks should care about their kids and only skim enough to not collapse the society. And, and, and of course, I'm against corruption completely, but uh, it's, it just seems like they're killing the golden goose right in front of us. Well, that, that's exactly right. You know, it's, 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 if you view government and, and government extracting money from the country as kind of like a parasite, you know, just think of an animal. At some point, the parasite becomes so big that the animal loses its health and eventually loses its life. And if you look through the history of, of you know, great civilizations of the past, whether it's the Roman Empire, whether it's the Spanish Empire, you have these situations where the capital, or, you know, for example, in France, Versailles, uh, the capital or the seat of power becomes so corrupt, so self-enriched at the expense of the rest of the country, the civilization just collapses. Um, I believe we have time to turn things around. I think we have times to improve the future of our country. But the trend lines right now are not good. And what I encourage people to, to do is not just simply give up and say nothing can happen. There is something that can happen, and that is that people can rise up. They can vote for people who are going to do the right thing. Thing. They can make their views be heard, make corruption a central issue. Don't just speak to your elected officials about what you want or what you don't sure. want. Talk to them about corruption and dealing with it. Peter Swizer, thank you. Breitbart.com, g-a-i.org. Folks, get involved. Uh, get this out to your local talk show hosts and others. Tell them uh, to interview Peter and to get the word out and get the book, Extortion, How Politicians Extract Your Money buy votes, and then line their own pockets. For foreign interest, I should add. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, Alec. Folks, we'll be back with tons of news, a special video clip, uh, and the whole X-Files uh, show to be based around InfoWars, basically. We we've got the trailer. Another GOP debate is upon us. When you had the World Trade Center go, people were put into planes that were friends, family, and they were sent back. They knew what was going on. They went home and they wanted to watch their boyfriends on television. Who else would come back like that at the Bushes and the Clintons calling them criminals? And this the is crazy. You guys go back to your live feeds. You see, we don't have rights in America. Only the people who are outside of this country have a right. The only right, right. that anybody has is to come live in America, mm -hmm. presumably to live off of us if that's what they choose. They can come live off of us. They can come uh, create war in our country. That's their right. But people in America don't have rights. The first and most important priority of the president of the United States is to protect the safety and security of America. No, it isn't. You're disqualified. You have an oath to the Constitution, and the oath to the Constitution says, and the Declaration of Independence says, you are created to protect our freedoms. Right. Not to keep us safe. They didn't want safety. They wouldn't have rebelled against the strongest government in the world if their first priority was safety. Their first priority was liberty. They created a government to protect that. I'm sick of these people. If we want to defend the country, we have to defend against who's are coming in. And Marco is, has more of an allegiance to Chuck Schumer and to the liberals than he does to conservative policy. Do you really think that Republicans have fueled the rise of ISIS? <laughs> Uh, yeah, where's she been? Who is she? The allies of <laughs> ISIS, the Islamic what? rebels against doing? Assad, uh, that we created a safe space. We made that space bigger for <laughs> ISIS to grow. Uh, we know what's going on. We know these guys are running ISIS. And when they talk about shutting down freedom of speech, he just repeated the exact same stuff he said in his speech. Even talking about how you don't refer to these people as masterminds, he knows precisely what he's saying. These are a bunch of Morlocks, and the American people are a bunch of Eloy. When they talk about serving America, you're on the menu. Join InfoWars January 14th, starting at 7 p.m. Central for another episode of Political Science Theater 3K. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can get six months free at PrisonPlanet.tv, but only for one more week. Next Monday, the special that only comes around once a year ends. In fact, we've never offered six months free before, but I really want to get more people to join and to be able to watch the nightly news, to see the live reports we do, the special reports, all my films, ebooks, and so much more. One person can share their membership with 20 people, and you are funding the absolute very leading edge, the vanguard of the resistance to the globalist operation on every front. We have to have our own platform that is harder for them to censor, harder for the system to shut down. PrisonPlanet.tv. We put out the daily radio show free with the video and audio feeds at Infowars.com forward slash show. But it is the members that get the nightly news exclusively and first and the commercial free 
video podcasts and audio podcasts that are paying it forward and financing and helping so many other people see the truth when we put the videos on Facebook, YouTube, and it's PrisonPlanet.tv that finances so much of the cameras, the equipment, the crew. The reporters, you are becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member. You get exclusive HD, higher quality, get it first. And then you can download it, share it with friends and family, share your passcode with them, your username. It's a win-win. And then you're helping finance to put it out for free to everybody. PrisonPlanet.tv.